Hello and welcome to today's episode of Comms Business Live. I'm Charlotte, editor of Comms Business, and I'm delighted to be joined by Kelly Maynard, who is the General Manager for Unified Communications and Collaboration at Exertis AB. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you, Charlotte. So today we're going to be diving into how Exertis is helping partners to grow their business in AB and Unified Comms in Collaboration, with plenty of insights into how Exertis has evolved its business and what this means for partners. Um, so first up, um, for anyone that hasn't met you yet, um, can you just talk us through your background and when you joined Exertis? Yeah, thank you. Um, as you said, my name's Kelly Maynard. I'm the general manager for UCNC. I've been with Exertis now uh, nearly 15 years. Um, I started predominantly focusing on the telecommunication telecommunication side of distribution mm -hmm. um, into Exertis and spent probably seven or eight years focused on Samsung telephony. Um, mm -hmm. That then progressed and um, I moved on to HP Poly. Um, but predominantly my main focus has always been around solutions and value added services which differentiate mm -hmm. our offering, I believe, to, to the market. Um, my career has progressed during that time and um, I've seen the channel evolve from traditional telephony into true UCNC solutions. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the backbone of these solutions migrate from analog to digital based uh, into IP and SIP based solutions which is kind of where we are uh, today. Um, as we all know the market is driven, um, is driven by Microsoft and, and Zoom which I'm pleased to say due to our specialism, uh, we are best placed to support our partners through this journey. Absolutely. Um, and you mentioned there kind of the changes that the industry has been going through over the past few years. Um, but kind of to keep um, kind of ahead of that curve, Exertis AV has also made some changes over the past three years in terms of both its culture and also the unified comms and collaboration business. Um, can you just talk us through those changes? Yeah, of course. I mean, Exertsy AV has certainly seen considerable changes in the last three years. I feel like with Jamie Brothwell and Alistair Coyne's leadership, uh, we've seen a clear, um, we have now a clear direction of travel. Uh, commercially, we've spent some time focused on key vendors, uh, the leading vendors that fit the space that we're in now, not who we used to be, um, you know, over the last five years. If we take our or the UCNC division, which now I kind of look after, I've mm -hmm. spent my time rationalising that portfolio to focus on key vendors such as HP Poly, Logitech, Barco, Lenovo, um, just to name but a few. We've got, uh, I think I've got seven vendors within that portfolio now, which I'm you know, really proud of and, and mm -hmm. keen to kind of progress. We're also keeping our eye on new products and solutions that meet our customer needs. We've increased uh, resource in this area due to the success that we've had in the meeting room space. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, two business managers uh, dedicated in our UCNC division. We also have two product managers in that space as well. Uh, we have a BDM, which is quite a new appointment for us this year, um, but he's out on the street and he's meeting the resellers and really promoting our technology out uh, with our partners mm -hmm. and we have two product specialists focused in this area as well. Um, they've all got over 25 years of experience and um, I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> um, I'm extremely proud with the results that we've achieved in FY24 and um, particularly in the meeting room and collaboration space mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see where our FY24 figures go. Um, I know a lot of companies are reporting um, this information, but it's been reported that only 17% of meeting rooms globally are equipped with meeting room solutions that require, uh, have the requirement of the workforce today. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, that represents a huge opportunity for our partners and for us to exceed expectations um, over the next coming months. Definitely. And everyone can relate to um, kind of the frustration of going into a meeting room, wanting everything to work and it just not quite being there. So um, if you can solve that problem. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think one of the areas that's really key is, um, you know, 
yes, installing those meeting rooms, but making sure people know how to use them. Uh, and that's probably the biggest challenge. And, you know, we work with our partners to help them understand the technology and also provide some additional services that, that, that can offer those solutions. Definitely, because it's always about the people, not just the technology. <laughs> certainly is, yeah. Um, so one key update for Exertis, as, as you kind of mentioned um, when discussing your kind of vendor partners there, was this new strategic partnership with Microsoft. Um, what does this kind of mean for your partners? What this means for partners is, yeah, we do have a strategic alignment with Microsoft. Um, we also are a Microsoft CSP partner in another area of our business mm -hmm. where they sell the Microsoft licensing. This allows us to be in regular contact with uh, the vendor. Um, we understand this allows us to understand their future strategies, the patterns in which they operate, the trends, uh, more importantly, around the Microsoft Teams Rooms um, solutions. Mm -hmm. We use this information to um, better inform ourselves, our salespeople, but also more importantly, our partners, giving them the tools that they need to go on and, and sell successful solutions. We use the information, we use the market intelligence to drive adoption for endpoints, which is obviously important to me in our UCNC division, um, but also the licensing from our other division. And it allows us to onboard new Microsoft uh, Teams partners. We recently, Charlotte, um, organised an event which was in collaboration with HP Poly, Microsoft, and it was to focus on our co-pilot event. It oh. was extremely successful. Our partners uh, gave great feedback. It's not something that we've done previously. It was a first for us. Mm -hmm. um, most of our events historically have been focused on hardware. Mm -hmm. um, and this one was more around a thought leadership piece. Um, it, the day was focused on educating the partners on how Copilot could benefit the meeting room space and not just the hardware that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a really great day. It was something that, like I said, we haven't done before. And it's certainly something that we would do again. It, it was focused around um, allowing our partners to understand new features, developments, any news associated to the product and the application. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will allow us to deploy more endpoints and spot future growth opportunities. Definitely. Um, and as you've talked through that, um, technology really is evolving all the time and being able to visualise new advancements is really critical. Um, for everyone within the ecosystem. Um, so how does Exertis help its partners to kind of demonstrate those new possibilities? Exertis AV particularly have invested in um, a significant amount of demonstration and training facilities in our offices across the UK. Um, mm -hmm. We have five offices across the UK of which we operate two boardrooms, uh, one in the Burnley office and one in the Basingstoke office. Um, we also have, in addition to that, 52 small and medium sized meeting rooms across all of the five locations. And what that means for us is that our, our own staff are utilising that equipment, which helps them to educate the partners when they're speaking to them about the equipment that we use. Um, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to be investing in further facilities in our national distribution centre in Burnley. Um, we're going to accommodate an additional between eight and 10 um, vendors in that space, which include HP Poly, Logitech, um, NEC from a screen perspective, um, Peerless for brackets, Kramer, and a number of other resellers in there as well. Um, what we want to do is encourage our, our resellers to um, use those facilities wherever possible. I understand that it's a northern facility, but a lot of the vendors have southern applications available to them um, and not everybody you know, can can um, get to those. So by having a northern facility, I think um, from the feedback that we've had from resellers, it's going to be really well received. So we'd encourage customers to uh, our resellers to invite end user customers there to mm -hmm. offer face to face demonstrations. But also we use those facilities on a daily basis for training courses that we host. Um, both for vendor and customers as well, and also internal um, training that we that we offer. Um, 
if there are any resellers that are not able to attend uh, the facilities either directly at the vendor or in our newly um, installed facilities when that's up and running we've invested in over a hundred thousand pounds worth of demonstration equipment that we loan out to partners um, and we send that out on a regular basis and there's a number of partners that use that facility um, quite a bit so hopefully that helps us all maximize sales for both us and the resellers um, and gets the end user the the information that they need to make um, better choices Yes, definitely. And lots of options there, which is the main thing um, so that resellers can select what works best for them or um, visit the locations that work for them. Or like you said, have it sent out um, if that's the best way for them to um, demonstrate these possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, one of the um, sort of mainstays throughout the industry is not one size fits all. And I think that's what's really important. Uh, we've had to make sure that we have hopefully covered um, every eventuality and every scenario that might crop up with a partner's opportunity and, and hopefully that allows us to do that. And um, sustainability is another key topic for the channel and distributors have a key role to play here. Um, what does sustainability mean for you guys at Exertis and how kind of does your approach help um, your resellers? Exertus takes sustainability very seriously and it's a huge topic for us. Um, we've actually created a team of eight people that are purely dedicated to driving our green and sustainability initiatives. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pleased to announce that we've actually already achieved our 2025 objective of reducing carbon emissions by 20%. Um, and we're on track to reduce carbon emissions by 50% uh, and the target for that was 2030. We also have a, a future target of being net zero by 2050. And I think hopefully with the gains that we've made over the last um, couple of years, we'll, we'll be able to do that sooner than the 2050 um, uh, break point. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a key area. Um, in addition to the carbon emissions, we've invested heavily in renewable energy. And for those of our um, partners that have visited the National Distribution Centre, you may or may not have seen the um, solar panels on the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually 2,746 solar panels on the warehouse, uh, the wow. rooftop of the warehouse, which is you know, impressive, mm -hmm. but that allows us to power our operations and any additional energy is purchased from the renewable ed energy companies. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a second area that we've focused on and then we also have um, a couple of other areas which is we've rolled out 29 electric vehicle chargers across four of the locations that we have uh, here in the UK and they're available for all of our employees and any visitors to utilise when they come to Exertis. I personally mm -hmm. have um, a fully electric car and I use that uh, on a regular basis so I had I had my reservations but yeah I love it now <laughs> um, we've reduced our average co2 emissions which we've mentioned above but we're fully committed to going um, fully electric stroke hybrid by September mm -hmm. 25 and I think we're certainly on track to do that definitely quick progress and um, a clear um plan for the future and um, so all good stuff there and um, Exertis also supports resellers in other areas what else would you highlight as key to how you work with the channel um the key areas for us are you know we've we've heavily invested in our AV and UCNC area of the business we now have over 20 specialist AV and UCNC team members and that's going back to the first point that we discussed that's uh, that's a change that we've made over the last three years and we, we really do invest in people people buy from people right yeah. um, we've got 14 external facing business development managers across our AV and B2B sales channels uh, we have eight dedicated product managers and product specialists and their focus is very much to um, develop the vendor relationship so that we have all of the tools that we need to pass that information on to our partners. Mm -hmm. um, our, we've increased our stock holding over this last three years and that's allowed us to be more agile, win more opportunities. Our current stock holding in UCNC is around 7 million at any one time. 
Um, and also our warehousing facilities, you know, that's really impressive facility. And we now promote a 99.4% next day delivery service, which I think mm -hmm. is really important to, uh, to partners that we deal with. Definitely. Um, and for anyone watching who likes what they hear and wants to find out more about partnering with you guys, um, what would you say is the best next step? The best next step, and we'd love to hear from you, is um, probably we've just launched our AV, Exertis AV LinkedIn page. So please yeah. register to that. And secondly, we have a email address, which is ucnc at exertis.co.uk. And that will come through to me and my team and we will support you and get back to any inquiries that you send through to us. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Comms Business Live. And um, thanks, Kelly, for sharing your thoughts with us. You're welcome. Thanks very much for having me. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure. And thanks also to everyone at home for watching. Um, if anyone would like to find out more about working with Exertis, there are some links in the video description to connect you with the right people, um, including the email address that Kelly just mentioned. Um, but otherwise, thanks everyone for joining us and have a great rest of the day. Thank you.